Welcome once again to this uh, late night uh, presentation. We are going through the series of uh, a need for uh, Sabbath reform. And uh, I'm grateful that today the weather is uh, okay. And uh, the Lord has seen it fit that uh, we may be able to share once again in uh, his word and uh, be educated in heavenly things. And so uh, I'd like us to be able to pray. I'd like us to be able to pray. And then uh, we can be able to share in the word of God. Uh, I want us to uh, be able to pray and then uh, we can share uh, in the word of God, I know that uh, we shall be blessed uh, by it. I know that uh, we shall be uh, blessed by it. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we want to look at your word. We pray that uh, the Holy Spirit may abide with us and uh, the ministration of all heaven may be with us that we may not speak of our own words, Lord, that I may speak that which uh, will delight your children to hear. And so I just pray that uh, you may cleanse my lips and through these impure channels, Lord, purified, you may speak to all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so once again, uh, I just uh, want to thank the Lord that. Uh, he is making it possible that um, we may learn these things that uh, are needful for our time. And uh, we may get to know him better in everything that we do. His name may be praised and uh, the glory of man may be put in dust so that uh, Christ may have his way. Today, in our late night uh, presentation, I want to look at something. And um, this is uh, what special instruction must be, must be presented to our new Sabbath keepers. You know, sometimes we explore the other commandments and uh, get into the minute and integrity things of what should be taught to the new converts. But also, I wonder, as, as we look at uh, this series of uh, a need for Sabbath reform, to look at these special instructions that uh, must be presented to new uh, converts or Sabbath keepers. Um, in uh, establishing uh, new churches, ministers should give careful instruction as to the proper observance of the Sabbath. Uh, we understand that this is... Uh, something that uh, concerns our eternal salvation. For we are told in uh, Testimonies, Volume 6, that uh, it means eternal salvation to keep the Sabbath holy. And so we must be guarded lest the lax practices that uh, prevail amongst the other denominations, which are not Sabbath keepers, um, may not be carried into the new religion and then it be followed with those who have become Sabbath keepers, those who profess to observe God's holy day. Uh, a line of demarcation should be properly sorry for that. It should be established that uh, the, the, the people who are becoming or coming into the new faith, they are not just taking the name of Seventh-day Adventist, but really they are taking upon the faith itself and to walk in newness of life and in holiness. Uh, and so I, I'd like to share a few things with us. I'd like to share some few things with us this evening. Um, Uh, 
In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13 and verse 14, lists three things we are not to do if we are to be blessed. If thou shalt honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words, then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord. You shall not rob God of one hour of holy time. Great blessings are promised to those who place a high estimate upon the Sabbath and realize the obligation resting upon them in regard to this observance. And um, I wanted to read something from the Holy Bible that is in the book of Isaiah still. We are looking at uh, the special instructions that should be given to new converts. In Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1, it says, Thus said the Lord, keep your judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near. Thus said the Lord, keep ye judge, thus said the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. This is something that uh, needs to be taught. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold. On it that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. These are the special instructions that should be given to the people who are taking upon themselves the name Seventh day Adventists. And it should be known that they are not just taking upon themselves the name, but the faith of the name. Isaiah 56, verse 3 says, Neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself the Lord. Speak, saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I'll give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. I'll give them an everlasting name that uh, shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in mine house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called the house of prayer for all the people. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, said, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. And so this is a special chapter to those who are newly becoming Seventh-day Adventists that um, they may think of the name of the Lord, what it means to be Sabbath keepers. And uh, as uh, I was continuing in this, and so we are not to rob God of even one hour of his holy time. The new converse should be told, those who, sang, those who sanctify the Lord, God in their heart by a strictly devotional frame of mind, and who sought to improve the sacred hours in keeping the Sabbath to the best of their ability and to honor God by calling the Sabbath a delight, these, the angels, were especially blessing with light and health, and special strength was given them. The Sabbath and the family were alike instituted in Eden, and in God's purpose, they are indissolubly linked together. On this day, more than on any other, it is possible for us to live the life of Eden. It was God's plan for the members of the family to be associated in work and study, in worship and recreation. The father as priest of his household and both father and mother as teachers and companions of their children. But the results of sin having changed the conditions of life to a great degree prevent this association. Often the father hardly sees the faces of his children throughout the week. He's almost wholly deprived of opportunity for companionship or instruction. But God's love has set a limit to the demands of toil, 
Over the Sabbath, he places his merciful hand. In his own way, in his own day, he preserves for the family opportunity for communion with him, with nature, and with one another. And so this is a day that um, it is the best day for family reunion. And I'm not talking about family reuni reunion in a secular way, but um, a family reunion where actually the whole family can come together. And because of uh, the duties of uh, the week, which has separated the father from the family, now he can put everything aside. The mother can leave his, her occupation and the children can uh, stop worrying about other things and just be as a family, commune together, speak one to another, share their difficulties, their experiences, their fears, their love, their courage. And such a testimonies will bring a blessing upon a family. And, um, you know, sometimes we think that the Sabbath, the whole Sabbath should be spent in church, but that is not um, actually what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. Yes, in Leviticus chapter 23, we are told that uh, the Sabbath is a day of holy convocation. And in Luke chapter uh, 4 verse 16, we are told that as it was his custom, he went in Nazareth, he went into the synagogue and then um, uh, uh, he read from the scriptures. Yes, <laughs> this is a day for a holy conv convocation. It is not a day for storytelling or mere gathering for gratification of, of um, speaking about business matters, secular things and uh, how uh, the, the economy is not working and all that stuff. It is a day of uh, sharing your joy, knowing that it's a day of recreation, a day of sanctification, a day of um, uh, starting a new life. Because we know that this is the day that the Lord meets with his people to bless them and uh, to speak to them in, uh, in a tenderest way. The, the, these youths, uh, finally lose all respect for the Sabbath and have no relish for religious meetings or for sacred and eternal things when um, we make the Sabbath become some common day that anything can be talked about and anything can be participated in. Those who are coming newly into the Sabbath truth should be instructed. This is not a day like any other day when where you can just do anything you want. They should be taught to exalt and honor the Sabbath than devising means to impart uh, uh, um, um, their own things or to, to do their own things. Our families should interest themselves in spiritual things and giving a correct view of the character of God. And there's no other a theme to share on the Sabbath day than the theme of uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the greatest love. I spoke about that in the previous uh, presentation that the Sabbath is a day of love. And today we are seeing that the new converts should be instructed that uh, it is not a day like uh, the day that they had in the churches that they were in. And then uh, they should be taught that uh, in pleasant weather, let parents walk with the children in the fields and groves amid the beautiful things of nature. Tell them the reason for the institution of the Sabbath. Now, we saw yesterday that, um, or uh, in the previous presentation, that uh, um, the Sabbath was given as a memorial for creation. But uh, when sin entered into the world, now it is given unto human beings with a new focus, a day of recreation. And um, uh, we are told that let the Sabbath means should be simple, palatable, and attractive with something special as a treat. Uh, that is uh, Testimonies of the Church, Volume 6, page 357. There are many people who indulge in traveling on the Sabbath day and uh, just commingling with everyone that they can mingle with. We are told in uh, uh, the same testimonies to the church, volume six, page uh, 359 and 360, 
I fear that we often travel on this day when it might be avoided. We should be more careful about traveling on the boats or cars on this day. It may be necessary for us to travel on the Sabbath, but so far as possible, we should secure our tickets and make all necessary arrangements on some other day. When starting on a journey, we should make every possible effort to plan so as to avoid reaching our destination on the Sabbath. It will be good if a minister is going to minister to travel early so that uh, he may not travel on the Sabbath hours. But if there is an impromptu request, then um, uh, the, we should look into these things so that uh, we may avoid every commerce that can be avoided in traveling to our areas of destination. How can we control our thoughts and speech on Sabbath? That is one thing that we ask. God requires not only that we refrain from physical labor upon the Sabbath, but that the mind be disciplined to dwell upon sacred themes. The fourth commandment is virtually transgressed by conversing upon worldly things or by engaging in light and tripling conversation. Taking upon anything or everything which may come into the mind is speaking our own words. So upon the Sabbath, they should conscientiously restrict themselves to conversation upon religious themes to present truth, present duty, uh, the Christian hope and fears, trials, conflicts, and afflictions to overcoming at last and the reward to be received. Continued on the instruction to be given to the new converts, we are told, what example did Christ leave for us in regularly attending divine worship on the Sabbath? And how does this relate to our experience today? Uh, and I just paraphrased Luke 4, 16. We are told in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 20 and 25, that uh, we shall not forsake of the assembling together as it has been the habit of some. And let us provoke each other unto love more so as we see the day nearing. So let us assemble. And um, when we assemble, let us provoke each other unto love. And um, let us um, even do this more as we see the day approaching, which day the day of the Lord. None should permit themselves through the week to become so absorbed in their temporal interest and so exhausted by the efforts for world gain that on the Sabbath, they have no strength or energy to give to the service of God. We are robbing the Lord when we unfit ourselves to worship him upon his holiday. And we are robbing ourselves as well, for we need the warmth and glow of association um, as well as the strength to be gained from the wisdom and experience of other Christians. God's love has set a limit to the demands of toil. Over the Sabbath, he places his merciful hand. In his own day, he preserves for the family opportunity for communion with him, with nature, and with one another. That is child guidance, page 530 to, and 536. And so the Sabbath day, as um, we have uh, been conducting it is a day that uh, people think that they can get so tired during the week that the Sabbath now is the day you will come there and uh, 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 just rest and not uh, have uh, a good time with your maker. Think about this. If uh, you are in a relationship and uh, you have to meet the person you love most. Think about this. If you work yourself out and you come to meet this person and you are just absent-minded, you are not concentrating, you are sleepy and all that. We don't do that in our natural relationships. And then we think that we can extend that to God and still be worshiping the Lord on the Sabbath. Let the work be done during the week, but let it not be so exhaustive in that when you come before the Lord, you are so tired, you can't concentrate, you are so sleepy, you are suffering from indigestion. Everything that can be thought of that is distracting is with you. 
we do not obtain a hundred part of the blessing we should obtain from assembling together to worship God. Because why? Because um, we have not been quickened by spiritual consciousness because of the way we have conducted ourselves during the week. And uh, people think that um, as the commandment says that uh, thou, sh thou shall labor in six days, and then the Sabbath is the, of the Lord that um, you should come and assemble together, have communion with God, that um, they can neglect their spiritual growth on the six days, and then on the seventh one, they get everything that they could have gotten during the week. That is another mistake. People do not have devotions. People do not have Bible studies. People do not have singing sessions. People have no time for evangelism. And they think that they can neglect all these things during the six days and then come and fit all these things into the Sabbath. We are told that um, if uh, this is the way that we will come into the Sabbath, we do not obtain a hundredth part of blessing we should obtain when we assemble together because our mind has not been exercised to spiritual things. And so even when the spiritual things are presented on us on this particular day, they do not make an impact in our life. They do not make a change because our mind and our body is not constituted towards listening to the voice of God. You can just get to know the voice of God on the Sabbath alone. You must exercise your spiritual uh, 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 faculties during the week so that the Sabbath may be a blessing. You are used to the voice of your shepherd, even Jesus Christ himself. And so when you assemble on the Sabbath, um, it is a revival. It is uh, understanding much better what you have been learning throughout the week. So let us labor, our normal labors, but let us have time with God also so that uh, he may revive us more when we come in his presence. The religion many profess this day is uh, a religion of uh, uh, convenience. Many would want to come in the presence of the Lord when it is convenient unto them. They do not come because they feel that emptiness, they feel the need, they feel that relationship is missing. They come because it is convenience. Such a kind of religion where actually worship God because of the convenience does not make us any better than those who have not received Christ. And um, as a means of intellectual training, the opportunities of the Sabbath are invaluable. And so let not things be done in a hurry uh, let not the Sabbath be packed so much so that uh, um, there is no freedom of uh, the rest of the mind and the rest of the body. Uh, meditation on the themes that um, will uh, bring into remembering the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ should be the things that should be dwelt on. We should... Um, I feel that everyone has a part to act in making the Sabbath meetings interesting. And uh, as we are told in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 5, when we meet, uh, Ephesians um, chapter 4, not chapter 5, when we meet, one has a psalm, one has a tongue, one has a reading. And by this, we, sh we will uh, grow each other. And remember the social meetings that uh, we always speak that they should be revived on the Sabbath where we share experiences, our visitations, and uh, the kind of challenges we are getting in our spiritual journey. These are the things that should be dwelt on that will encourage those who are uh, faltering in their walk with God. And when we do this, surely the blessings of the Lord will be upon us. And uh, others will learn from the experience of others. And uh, I'd like to read this together with us as we seek to encourage each other. Uh, surely we will want every act of worship, whether it be by hymns of praise and adoration, reading of the sacred scriptures, prayer or spiritual message to be presented as in the very presence of God. 
we will be careful as to the decorum and order of our service with particular emphasis on the manner of raising money, distribution, and formation of literature, handling church business so that the spirit of worship is not nullified. Some have expressed the problem of so few attending their regular business meeting during the week. They feel the need of having a commercial on Sabbath when the whole church is together. Do not yield to this. God will honor the few who make the decisions during their regular business meeting. Many ministers are presenting this information by way of church letters, which eliminates the necessary of having items presented to the church which are not suitable for the Sabbath. Thus, the holy hours of worship are not um, desecrated. Some, we read some announcements, sorry, some announcements such as those, those that refer to games, social, picnics, and other secular activities are totally inappropriate for the Sabbath hours and the worship service. So some other arrangements should be made to get this kind of information to the members of the church. Service to God, service to God considered first of all, that some form of soul winning is in accord with God's will on his day. So um, no business transaction should be conducted on the Sabbath as we read, no announcements for social games and picnics and secular activities should be encouraged on the Sabbath. And this, this brings us to another important issue the issue of accepting politicians to come to the pulpit on the day of the Sabbath and they announce what they, what they want to announce. And God is not a respecter of men that uh, politicians will just do whatever they want on the pulpit. And not only the politicians, but even the church elders uh, uh, um, and the pastors and the lay members who would want to really... Uh, converse upon things that have nothing to do with the atonement on the Sabbath. We are told anything that is not geared towards winning of souls should not be discussed on Sabbath. And some other announcements better be com communicated by letters to the people. However good those announcements are, if they are not sacred, if they are not related to anything to do with winning of souls, they should not be announced on the Sabbath. Some other way of communication should be devised so that uh, the Sabbaths will not be desecrated because of these um, announcements. We are, talk we, are we are looking at the issue of uh, what is the special information that should be given to the new converts. Um, some of uh, the things that should be taught are harmful on the Sabbath or discredit the Sabbath. Uh, some of the things that the new converts should be taught that there are things that discredit the Sabbath. Uh, just uh, go through some few as we come to an end of this presentation. Um, by hiring, justling, impatient, by pursuit of school studies, these are some of the things, and this is coming from one testimonies, volume six, page 357. By hiring, jostling, and impatient, this is one way of breaking the Sabbath. By pursuit of school studies, this is a form of breaking the Sabbath. This is uh, from testimonies, volume four, page 114. And you find that uh, uh, the, the, the children of the Sabbath keepers go to school on the Sabbath, they attend secular studies and still they call themselves Sabbath keepers. Another way of breaking the Sabbath is by reading secular papers or books. Um, 60, page 355, by allowing business to divert the mind. 2T, page 583, and uh, 60, page 356. Those who are not fully converted to the truth frequently let their minds run freely upon worldly business, and although they may rest from physical toil upon the Sabbath, their tongues speak all out what is in their minds. Hence, these words concerning cattle, crops, losses, and gains. The Sabbath day is not a day to discuss how your cattle is doing, how your crops are doing, 
what losses you have made or what gains you have made during the week. These are secular matters. And we have been caught up in this issue of talking about our cattle, our crops, our businesses, the losses and the gains. All this is Sabbath breaking testimonies to the church, volume two, page 703. A partial observance of the Sabbath law is not accepted by the Lord and has a worse effect upon the minds of sinners than if you made no profession of being a Sabbath keeper. 40, page 248. You find that people attend the Sabbath half day. And I'm not talking about um, if you decide to spend your Sabbath in the house and with your family. I'm talking about where actually you come into the Sabbath half a day and then you go to attend to your own businesses half of the Sabbath day. This is Sabbath breaking, and this is something that should be taught to new converts that uh, it is not like Sunday keeping where people go to the church until 12 and then they go about to do their own work. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, is standard from Sinai. No partial obedience, no divided interest is accepted by him. It is not a small matter to rob a neighbor, yet he who will scorn to defraud his fellow man will without shame rob his heavenly father of the time that he has blessed and set apart for a special purpose. And so uh, we, we should look into these things and um, ask ourselves that, uh, have we been keeping the Sabbath holy or have we been Sabbath breakers? And have we been a good example to those who are new converts or we have been a stumbling uh, block unto them? And so we are not just to observe the Sabbath as a legal matter. We are to understand it is spiritual bearing upon all the transactions of life. All who regard the Sabbath as a sign between them and God, showing that he is the God who sanctifies them, will represent the principle of his government. They will bring into daily practice the laws of his kingdom. Daily, it will be their prayer that the sanctification of the Sabbath may rest upon them. Every day, they will have the companionship of Christ and will exemplify the perfection of um, his character. So in the new birth, the heart is brought into harmony with God. Those things that you did hate, you now want we want love. And the things that you hated, now the thing that you love, you hate if they are not of Christ. And so let us embark on these uh, Sabbath reforms and let us live up to every ray of light that uh, we have received. Our eternal interests are involved here and that is why uh, we must cherish the ray of light we have so that uh, it may not become darkness. For we are told that if the light in us becomes darkness, what a greater darkness. Do not think that uh, if you take your position for the Bible truth, you will lose your position. You had better lose your position than to lose Jesus. You had better be partakers of the self-denial and self-sacrifice of the Lord than to go into your own way seeking to gather yourself the treasures of this life. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his life? We love to follow and pursue the things of this world. But um, the things of this world are coming to an end. And uh, what we need is Christ in our hearts, formed within the hope of glory. And then uh, uh, I like to say that uh, the Lord is uh, doing everything to save us. It is only us who may not be willing to be saved, but the Lord himself is willing to save us. The fact that the father sent his son to die for us is enough evidence that there is nothing that he will withhold from us that is needful for our salvation. So let us place ourselves in an environment, in a position where we can do the will of God and uh, we can appreciate his voice when he speaks unto us. Otherwise, the Lord bless us. Until the next um, late night presentation, I want to say that may the Lord uh, continue uh, blessing us and um, speaking to our hearts. Those things that seem so hard when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, he will make them uh, simple and uh, we shall be able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And for the new converts, 
let them know that the Lord loves them and he is not like uh, uh, a tyrannical leader or a ruler who is just somewhere sitting to notice the mistakes of the subjects of his kingdom and punish them. But God is a loving father and we can approach him as our father. Just the way you approach your father, you can approach our father which is in heaven with reverend, with love, with fear, not that fear that uh, really uh, uh, causes you to tremble and shudder and uh, uh, think that the Lord doesn't love you and he's looking for your mistake. And so if we present the love of Christ to the people, then uh, it will be of a telling influence rather than just getting them into a legal religion. And so may God bless you and uh, we can offer thanksgiving as uh, we end this. Glory and honor be unto thee, Heavenly Father. All your commandments are righteousness, and uh, we shall delight in them. They have made us wiser than our teachers. And uh, Father, we want to continue in that wisdom that cometh from above and not from below. Thank you for this late night. Whoever has tuned in to listen or to hear this, Lord, bless them. And to the people who are new in this faith, may your hand rest upon them that they will see your great sacrifice of your son to make sure that we are sanctified and we are made whole once again. Be with us, Lord, and bless this message and the hearers. And even, Lord, you may bless my lips, that, Lord, it may speak of the things of heaven. Your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And uh, God bless you. We shall be talking in the next presentation the obligation of different departments, that is the parents, the children, the pastors, and the elders on the Sabbath day. And so until then, God bless you and keep you. And uh, wherever you are, if it is in Africa, have a blessed night. Whichever place you are, good day wherever you are, and uh, God be with you. <laughs>